Hey everybody, what is good? Happy Saturday, Jacob here, about to go into a recording session. As you can see, there's cello number one back there. Cello number two, my electric cello, shout out to Yamaha. Uh -huh. We're all prepared. Um, but I've got a couple of minutes to kill and we've been getting a ton of questions uh, on the pickup test uh, website via email, probably like 10 or 12 a day, uh, way too many uh, for us to actually answer, but there's a lot of overlap. So I thought I would try a little experiment and answer one of those questions right here in a super impromptu, off the cuff kind of way. And hopefully it'll be valuable for a lot of you guys that may be having uh, similar uh, questions. And you know, if, if you like this, um, I'm waiting in parking lots a lot of the time <laughs> these days uh, outside of recording studios. So uh, yeah, leave a comment uh, if you want to see more and you know, we'll, we'll, we can do that. So this one comes from uh, Daniel. Uh, he said, lately he's been struggling with his tone dexter. He's playing a musical in Israel. And it says, it seems the trade-off with using the tone dexter is a more mic sound versus a fatter sound from the pickup alone. I try to find the right blend, but it usually brings me to a very small percentage of the mic sound. Um, okay. Um, so it sounds to me like you'd like to get more of a mic sound, but that's not really working, probably cutting through uh, the ensemble you have. And this is a really uh, good example of what I was talking about in my Tone Dexter Tips video, uh, the idea of a quote unquote useful sound versus a realistic sound. You know, no matter what type of rig you're using to amplify your instrument, a lot of us make the mistake of dialing in what we consider uh, an ideal tone, which is usually as realistic as we can get. Uh, and we do it at home, right? In our practice room by ourselves. Maybe we record it into uh, uh, whatever DAW we're using, whatever recording software, uh, or we set up a loop and we dial that in. And the problem is, of course, is that in the real world, um, when you combine your sound with the sounds of others in a band, um, those other instruments are cutting or taking or competing for uh, s frequencies uh, that our instrument would usually have all to itself if we were playing solo. So you've got drums and keyboards and uh, a bass guitar and all of those types of things. And what happens is is that only certain frequencies that we have can really come through and so we want to accentuate and boost those frequencies because the other ones even if they sound great at home uh they're just not going to be heard uh and therefore they don't matter and so in a situation like you're describing daniel where you're playing with a really big band with electric guitar and electric bass and things like that your useful sound is going to be a very, very different version of your tone than what you're dialing in at home or that you might even like to hear when it's played all by itself. Uh, another great way to think about this that I mentioned in the other video is, is if you were just playing your acoustic instrument and you, you know, had just played Bach your entire life, just solo music, uh, in a nice room and you were used to that sound and all of a sudden they put you in front of an orchestra, like a big symphony, you're playing like a big romantic concerto like Schumann or Dvorak or whatever, your way of playing and the amount, how far you're going to have to go and play near the bridge, uh, to the point where there may even be a little bit of sizzle in your tone, right? So that those higher frequencies, so that you can cut through the orchestra, uh, is going to be completely different. Um, it's a totally different way of playing, and it's a different way of listening to yourself. Um, I was once uh, studying with a uh, 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 Jerry Grossman, uh, who was principal of the Met uh, when I was at uh, Knizel Hall, and um, he kept forcing me. I was in this big romantic piano concerto. It was a, a Schumann, uh, maybe it was Smetna, I can't remember. And I, you know, he kept forcing me. He's like, close to the bridge, close to the bridge, close to the bridge. And he told me that when he first started to really play that way, um, he had to trust in his teachers and in the people around him that that was the sound that was needed to cut through. And so when you are dialing in a sound with your tone dexter, you really want to think of, or if you're using a V sound, you want to treat that blend knob the way you would a mic. Um, 
and it's not just to eliminate feedback, but it really is to find your useful tone in whatever uh, situation you're in, uh, or your usable tone, I should say. So. Uh, the bigger the band, and this is a very general rule, you know, the more sonic frequencies people are competing for, the more pickup you're going to want to be blending in, generally speaking. Not only is it fatter, but a lot of the time there's just more of that kind of harsh cut in the high end, and you're just going to need that. Um, that's not really the Tone Dexter's fault. It's not your gear's fault. It's just acoustics and physics. So um, I hope that helps. And uh, again, if you guys like uh, these quick little impromptu uh, videos, uh, leave a comment below and um, I'll make another one. Okay. See ya.